and everybody should know that's how love goes. It's good for the soul. Oh, I've got a long way to go, but it won't stop the pain. No, no. That's the kind of thing that keeps me coming. already bored. I don't enter every room already bored. Only the boring ones. Okay, well, I'm with Terry today. I don't want to be rushed. I'm going to meet the highly esteemed professor, attorney, shake his hand, and get him to personally autograph a copy of his book. No, you're not doing all of that. Why not? Because I did not come here to look like a fan. I went to law school with this man. So neither me nor my sisters are going to gush over him. Okay, okay. No gushing. Thank you. <clears throat> Besides, you did enough gushing for all of us when you guys were at Northwestern together. Oh, I did not. Oh. We had a healthy, competitive relationship with a little bit of sexual tension. Oh. Oh. In other words, he's the only man your big sister ever wanted who didn't want her back. I did not know such a man existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one does. Mm -hmm. And he's right over there. Damn, Terry. I know. Now, he is just... I know. You know what? That Victor Lucas, a brilliant professor and attorney. He's, um... You're obsessed now, just like you were obsessed then. <laughs> oh, God, he's coming over here. Relax. Yeah. Oh, I'll be over there. Oh, hey, oh, my God. Hey. Terry Joseph. Are you okay? You okay? Yes, I'm fine. The little one. You all right? Excuse me, boys. Excuse me. Come. Gloria. Gloria. Terry Joseph. Terry Joseph. Victor Onuka. Victor, hi. Just checking to see if you're okay. Uh, that fall looked painful. Well, the only thing really bruised is my ego. Other than that, I'm fine. Ow! You are right? Yeah. Of course, someone just put a bad settlement offer on my desk. You're probably familiar with the case. The African American Heritage Society versus Buildable Homes, Inc. Yeah, I think so. I'm representing Buildable Homes. You know, being on the book tour took me out of the loop, but uh, I'm back now. And uh, but listen, uh, Terry, I'd very much like to take mm -hmm. you to lunch. Lunch? Yeah, uh, you know. Comes in the middle of the day between breakfast and dinner. Uh, sure, I'd love to. Good. I'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. Damn. 
It's here somewhere. I saw it. A receipt for hubcap wheel and lug remover tools. You know, this is a complete waste of time. Now, you obviously have plans. And it's getting late, so why don't you just go? Oh, it's okay. I'm just meeting my girlfriends. Dressed like that? Uh, I thought you were meeting one of your men. <laughs> Please. My divorce is barely final, and I'm not trying to meet a man right now. Here it is. $583.52. Oh, now they have to give me a refund for that jacked-up equipment they sold me. What would I do without you? Well, I'm lucky for you. You don't have to find out. Yeah. But you do owe me. And I'll take payment and two tickets to the Cubs game. Oh, you got a deal. <laughs> oh. So how long have you been divorced anyway? Oh, I mean, if you don't mind me asking. Two years. It's been two years. I guess I should learn how to mind my business, huh? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I should talk about it, though. It's been hard for me to even think about men after what I've been through. Working with you has been good for me, though. Well, how was that? Well, now nah, I can't just write off all the brothers. But you showed me there's still some good ones out there. Yeah, well, maybe one or two. <laughs> all right, good night, Good night, Kenny. Too revealing, even for me. <laughs> then it's perfect. For lunch with your professor? Oh, he's not my professor, Bird. He's a professor. Oh, well, it looks like you're trying to impress. But we are just gonna catch up, have a good time. How much of a good time? You know, I thought I was the lawyer. Why are you interrogating me? Because I'm worried about you. You're not even finished with Damon, and here you are acting all crazy over another man. Somebody's acting crazy, Bird. I'm just not going to sit around depressed, wondering what's wrong with me anymore. Mm. Well, I still think you and Damon need to have a serious heart-to-heart. -heart. Yeah, well, I've done that. With my first husband who screwed around on me, with my second husband who screwed around on me, and surprise, another man who screwed around on me. Now you want me to beg that man, who never gave me a ring, a penny, or a promise, to tell me why he couldn't keep his dick in his pants. Yes, Terry, I want you to talk to him. Why? Because you still love him. I'm not doing it. From now on, I'm taking care of Terry. And if an attractive, intelligent man wants to take me to lunch, well, I'm going. Here, hang these up. I'm going to go check in my other closet. for me to believe, too, but up until three months ago, I spent my entire professional career at one law firm. <laughs> I admire that. I've never been able to stay in one place for more than about 14 months. 14 months? It's pretty specific. Yeah. The math goes something like this. At about 10 months, <laughs> A horrible boredom begins to rear its no, ugly no, no. head. Wait, what about when you were clerking for Justice Ginsburg? Especially when I was clerking for Justice Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> so after you've held a position for about 14 months, you... I'm done. Oh, oh. 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 Let me assist you with that. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Thank you. I've got it. Sure. Mm-hmm. How was your meal? Oh, the lamb chops were pretty good, but not as good as my own, but good. Surely you're not suggesting that you know your way around the kitchen. Oh, I beg your pardon. I was raised in a family of cooks. I was raised in a family of doctors. Still doesn't make me one. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Nuka, I'm going to have to insist that I see you at my home for dinner. Just say when. Well, today is when you insulted me. Tonight is when I prove you wrong. The first time I'm looking forward to being wrong. <laughs> well, if 
we're going to hang out. It won't be your last. To being wrong. To you being wrong. Wow. Hey, Kenny. Well, man, am I glad to see you. Oh. See, your back is still slowing you down. Oh, yeah. Brother, you don't ever want to feel the way I've been feeling. I need to hurry up and get back to my old self. Hey, did you, uh, did you get that for me? Yeah, I got it, but we need to talk first. Oh, what's wrong? Just want to make sure we clear, man. I mean, this is a one-time thing. Uh, I ain't trying to lecture nobody, but, uh... I can't do this for you again. Well, you know, I appreciate you looking out. You know, I, I only needed a few more. was just in the neighborhood. Yeah, you know, and, and I gotta run, so bye. Bye, Lamb. Hey, so you know they gave us that refund today. Great. I hate to say this, and you can stop me if I'm out of line. I saw Lem give you that bottle. Well, I don't know what you think you saw, but... It's right there in your pocket. You know something? Now, we can laugh and joke in the office, and that's cool. But if you're having a problem remembering when the line is drawn between employer and employee, you know, I can help you fix that real quick. Just checking on dinner. Is everything okay? Uh, well, what if it isn't? I don't know. Maybe I get in my car, head over there, and throw something together for you? Well, in that case, everything's fine. And what is that supposed to mean? It means Victor will be here soon. I gotta go. Bye. Okay. No. Hello. Victor, hi. I just got home. I was running late from work. Just left your house. I'm so sorry. Um, if you still want to go to dinner, we can go out. My treat? I'm just too tired to cook. Well, I've got a better idea. Hmm. Why don't I pick up some food and bring it over? You would do that, really? Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds great. See you shortly. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. 
What's up? Just work, work, you more work. What's up with you? Oh, nothing. I just stopping by. Seeing what's going on. <sighs> Man, I don't believe you. What? You said you were through with those pain pills. Oh, come on. Man. What's up, Shorty? <laughs> Look, I thought I told you to wait in the truck. I had to use the bathroom. Well, well go, go ahead, then. <clears throat> well, I, I still got some left, but they're gonna only last me till the end of the week. The way my back has been acting up, I'm gonna need enough to get through the next few weeks. Well, I feel for you. I really do, but I can't do it. Oh, you mean you won't? It won't, can it? Don't matter. I ain't doing it. Well, come on, man. And leave that shit alone. You know, all right, Mr. Straight and Narrow. You don't want to help me, then don't help me. And just tell me who your dealer is, and I'll go get it myself. I don't have a dealer. I get him from a pharmacy near Hyde Park. Pharmacy? Yeah, there's a crooked pharmacist that sells them out of his back door. Wow. Are you surprised? <laughs> Don't be. These days, anybody will do anything. Are hey, you ready to go, son? Yeah. Bonkalim. Bye, Ma. Hello? Uh, hey, Lila. Hi. What's up? Well, you know, I'm calling because, uh... uh you know, I, I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I didn't mean to bite your head off like that today. I understand. It's just that, um, I'm a little worried about you. That's all. Mm. But we will keep it strictly business from now on. Oh, come on. You ain't got to get all salty with me. I'm not getting salty. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to remember my place, employer. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I call to, to, to tell you how bad I feel, and you got to go get all insubordinate. Uh-huh. You feel bad enough to take me to the game you bought those tickets for? Oh, well, yeah, I, I guess I do. <laughs> Good. <laughs> all right, well, I, I guess I, I better uh, let you go. I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Oh, bright and early. That's funny. Uh, what's that, baby? I didn't hear the phone ring. Oh, uh, it didn't. I called Lila. You know, we, uh, had a little disagreement today, and I was just making sure we were cool. Oh, are you? Yeah. Hey, you know those files that you organize in the office? They are so organized. I mean, you... <laughs> Kenny. Huh? I'm not jealous of anything Lila's doing at Jailway Towing. You hired her to do a good job, and she's doing a good job. I'm happy about that. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I figure out what I want to do, I'm going to be really good at that, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, baby, what do you mean by that? One thing is clear to me, Miss Joseph, that had you been there with the early Hebrews, you would have insisted that the Bible read, and on the eighth day, Terry Joseph invented the law. <laughs> Professor Samuels. Yes! <laughs> oh. okay. okay, I've got one. Okay, shoot. Mm. Being at Northwestern is a privilege, not a right. Oh. If you can't follow the rules of the privileged, you have the, the right to be misused. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Weaver, registered. <laughs> registered. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Victor. Okay, I got one. Shoot. Why didn't you like me back then? Whoa. Left field. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you have to remember that I come to the U.S. for the first time to go to law school. Mm-hmm. And where I'm from, above all else, you respect your elders. 
And the way you challenged professors seems so disrespectful. But that wasn't my intention at all. I know that now, but back then I thought, what a rude, loud-mouthed little girl. <laughs> <laughs> my turn. Shoot. Why did you pretend you weren't home when I came here earlier? I didn't. I did. I sometimes have trouble breathing and I get a little freaked out and overwhelmed. And I was having one of those moments. I see. I shouldn't have told you that. Oh, come on. I'm glad you did. And if you tell anybody, I will swear on a stack of Bibles that it was the one talking. I'll testify in your defense, okay? If we're playing true confessions. Mm. When we were in law school, I was in awe of you. Mm. <laughs> I thought you were the only person who could possibly be smarter than me. What do you think of me now? You're pretty special, Victor Anuka. I'm smarter. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty special as well. Receiving, boss. All right, thanks, Lila. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. you want to come over for a while, hang out, uh, have a drink? Yeah, you know, uh, can I take a, a rain check? Sure. No problem. <laughs> Hey, Pumpkin. Oh, what are you doing still up? Waiting for you to read me a night story. Bye. <laughs> oh, Daddy's running late. Maybe my Mommy can read it to you tonight. Okay. Well, I love you, Honey Bunny. Love you, too. Hey, can you chair away? How was the game? Oh, uh, it was, uh, it was good. Hey, Ma, can I talk to him? Your son wants to talk to you. Hold on. Hey, Dad, I scored 2,000 points on Death Raider. Can you believe that? Hey, hey, boy, give me that phone. <laughs> hey, we'll see you when you get here, babe. Love you. Okay. I, 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 uh, I, I love you, too. Drink or something? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm cool. Thanks. Um, you look like you want to say something. I guess I do. Uh, and, Lila, I've been sending you mixed messages. You know, I have to admit, you know, there's something special about you. Thank you. I even had this, uh, this dream that you and I were, uh, you know, I, Lila, I love my wife, okay, and I, I love my kids. 
God, I love my kids. And I just can't do anything to jeopardize that. Um, don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. Hm. Well, isn't that exactly what you're doing by abusing pain pills? Uh, you know, I, I'm not even... Kenny. I know you're a good man. And I'm a lonely woman. And that's a dangerous combination. Yes, it is. You know, it's ironic, because one of the things I first admired about you is that you so obviously love your family. And now here I am wishing you didn't have one. My love. Uh -uh. Good night. Mm. Yeah. for a good Indian takeout. The search has ended. You know, my grandfather used to say, always serve good food with bad news. What bad news? The Heritage Society versus uh, Buildable Homes. I'm representing AHS. You're kidding. Oh, oh. No, I'm not. Well, you know I'm representing Buildable Homes. That's why I'm here. Oh. I've been thinking this one over for a while. Uh -huh. When I researched the details of the complaint, uh, I didn't know how I could turn it down. Well, I don't see how you could do anything else. Buildable Homes wants to desecrate the graves of our ancestors, and I can't stand by and watch that happen. Look, nobody's talking desecration. My client has even offered to relocate the remains. That's still desecration. Victor, we can't save the dead, but we can help the living. What about all those people who need the affordable housing that my client's gonna build? Will you please ask someone else in your office to take over this case? Of course not. <laughs> Neither one of us is fresh out of law school. We can separate business and personal. to run in seven counties and uh, fully equipped to do on-site repairs. Here's a brochure for next time. Thanks for all your help. Hey, no problem, man. All right, take care. What are you doing? Leaving. Oh, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I found somebody who can take my place. You know, she can start tomorrow. You know I can't run this place without you. have been complicated around here lately. But you know, everything is going to be okay. I'm in love with you. Just say goodbye. But do you, you need anything? I just need to get away from here. Robert, here. Yeah. Robert. Can I get you anything to drink? We all know this is court-ordered mediation. If we can approach this with an open mind and a spirit of problem-solving, we'll find it's far more efficient than litigation. First of all, I'd like each of you to state the problem as you see it. Be as neutral as you possibly can. Buildable Homes has every right to construct this housing development, and everyone in the community except AAHS wants it to happen. <sighs> Ms. Joseph, that's hardly stating it neutrally. She's overcompensating in order to justify something that's blatant and immoral. Mr. Walker, would you please inform Mr. Onuka that we are not here to debate my moral convictions? Time out. 
Could everyone except the attorneys please step out? Oh, thank you. Did you two miss the whole keep an open mind speech? Doesn't take a psychic to know that there's some baggage heating this thing up. Now, whatever it is, if you can't put it aside, we're wasting our time. All I want is justice. But then you're representing the wrong side. I'm representing the side that my conscience has led me to represent. Can you say the same? I'm not the one with a book to promote. Getting a little publicity, Mr. Anuka? Oh, that's as good a cue as any. You two won't be mediating anything anytime soon. I'm calling it right now. I'll notify the judge that you'll be reporting to court this afternoon. Well, I hope you don't think you have a better shot in the courtroom. Well, actually, I do. The courtroom is no place for the faint of heart or the short of breath. I told you that in confidence. And it's in confidence that I'm telling you that you should back off of this case. I'll see you in court. Hey, Chess versus Buildable Homes. Victor Onuka for the African American Heritage Society. Terry Joseph for the respondent, Buildable Homes, Inc. I'm told you two really made your mediator's day. Rest assured, if I get frustrated with you, you'll wish to God that I wasn't. You're up first, petitioner. Thank you, Your Honor. We ask you to enjoin the defendant's construction on the land in question, because that is clearly in the public interest. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of slaves were put to rest there. This land is brimming with history, bleak and brutal history, the kind we must not forget by covering it with cement and lumber. Hard to oppose that. We oppose this injunction because decent, affordable housing for low-income families is a far more pressing public interest. Take a look at the streets of downtown, of any major city. You will find homeless living in despair and poverty. Then take a look at the current state of public housing. You will find overcrowding, violence, and drug abuse. Construction of this housing development will allow a lot of people to escape such living conditions. Conditions that nobody should have to live in. So the ends justify the means? Haven't these people suffered enough from that kind of thinking? Slavery was a linchpin of the South's economy in the 18th and 19th century. That end justified slave auctions held in town squares with legal permits and police protection. Now, even unto death, these people ought to be exploited? How familiar for them. And how tragic for us. Victor Onuka does not have to educate this court or me on the horrors of the African Holocaust. These victims are my ancestors, too. No one is condoning the travails suffered by the deceased. My client has, in fact, showed respect by offering to relocate the remains. Why not build someplace else? We've researched that. Unfortunately, zoning laws and restrictions on developing low-income housing has limited buildable land options. But this land is hallowed ground, consecrated by the blood and suffering of people who this country can never repay. All right. It's getting late in the day. Let's pick this up in the morning. me that plate. What is wrong with you? Nothing. I'm tired. I'm tired, too. But I didn't ignore you all through dinner. I wasn't ignoring you. 
No, wait, if you don't tell me what's on your mind, I'm a pop you. Tell. Bird, don't do that. Oh. Stop, okay? I don't feel like playing. I don't want to know this. If it's bothering you, yeah, I want to know. You can't tell anybody, Bird. You got to swear. Maybe I swear. Kenny's strung out on pills. What? Painkillers. Uh-uh. I scored him some the last time he ran out because I didn't know how bad it was. You scored him some. Look, he was desperate. I did it. I shouldn't have, but I did. Yeah, you got that part right, Lev. You shouldn't have helped him. Look, Bird, please don't tell your sister. I won't. Dry the dishes. Dinner break. Yeah, I was. I just uh, turn on the TV. Mm -hmm. Channel two. Okay. Bill Holmes knows it, and you should know it, that this case is a glaring example of institutional racism. And we thank Reverend Bobby Baxter and Operation Rise Up for its generous support. There's um, no thanks necessary when you're doing God's work. But what is fighting racism but God's work? And what is resisting oppression but God's work? So we cannot fail. Even when one of our own, one of our best and brightest, is hurled at us time and again, Terry Joseph represents the racist agenda of buildable homes just as she represented the racist agenda of Wildflower Cola. She prevailed back then. But the good Lord is patient, and he loves justice. And I promise you, we will rise. We will rise. We. Victor Anuka's cell number from your Palm Pilot. Thank you. God bless you. Everything's gonna be fine. See you. Hello? I obviously mistook you for someone with integrity. You can't win this case in the court, so you're trying it in the press? Trials are public for a reason, Terry. Perhaps you should ask yourself why you want to hide. You're hiding behind Bobby Baxter, allowing him to attack me with things you can't say in court. Reverend Baxter's reference to you defending Wildfly Cola was not my idea. You shouldn't take cases if you're going to be ashamed of yourself for doing so later. I'm not ashamed of anything. Everyone is ashamed of something. You're right. I'm ashamed of the way you're trying this case, and you don't have enough character to be ashamed of yourself. I think I can stop by anytime I want to. <laughs> well, usually you don't like to. You know, I don't like getting oil on those expensive shoes you always sport. Don't play. You are funny. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so what's up? Everything cool with you and Lynn? Yeah. Hmm. You know, we have our good days and our bad days. Hmm. He claims I've changed since the accident, but I'm just trying to be me. Okay, yeah. How you doing? So you gonna tell me why you're really here? I told you, Kenny, I'm just checking on you. I'll be damned he told you, didn't he? Yeah, he told me. Yeah, go, Bert. 
there's nothing for you to say to me. You're not the one who's in pain and who's got a, a business to run and a family to take care of. Oh, really? Then what have I been doing for the past two years? Taking care of my family and running my business. Lem just got right. And even now, we still fight like cats and dogs. You know, when, when he finds out I came down here, we're going to fight some more. But I'll deal with that. Because I needed to come down here and make you look me in my eye. Look me in my eye. And tell me that what Lem said ain't true. Mind your business. Right? You are my business. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so now I'm your business. What are you going to go do? Run and tell your sister that, that, that her husband's hooked? Mm -mm. This ain't about me going to Max. Well, then go home, then. Or what? You know what? When Lem was running the streets, I remember crying and promising you that I wasn't going to call you anymore to come help me find my husband. You said to me, you said, Bird, I'm your brother. You call me anytime you need something. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need something. I need you. Kenny, if you get addicted to those things, who's going to be there for me? You know, your, your, your sisters, like, like always. My sisters don't laugh at me when I threaten their lives for calling me Big Bird. Flush him down the toilet. Look, I just want you to be the man that you are. And if you decide that you don't want to be dependent on those things, then that's the way it'll be. You and I both know it. A gag order what? be imposed yes. in these proceedings to prohibit both sides from talking to the media. We oppose. The public interest is at the heart of this case. Oh. Now, we can't place these proceedings under a veil of secrecy. Indeed, we move that cameras be allowed into the courtroom. Mr. Anuka just wants a soapbox to espouse his personal beliefs. Cameras will be disruptive and will waste the course of time and in will no way lead to a fair resolution of this case. Is it fair? that you stand upon the shoulders of the oppressed who you now degrade and devalue. Sit down, Reverend Baxter. The entire proceeding is unfair. I told you to sit down. I could have you arrested, but I suspect that is exactly what you want. Deputies, escort Reverend Baxter outside. You can do what you want to black folks, but we stand upon the strength of our Lord. You can't do this to us. We shall rise. We shall I need no further demonstration than not to agree with Ms. Joseph. Petitioner's request to have cameras in the court is denied. Continue, Ms. Joseph. Hey. Hi. I spoke to Kenny. No, you didn't. Bird, you promised you wouldn't do that. I had no choice. You said he wouldn't listen to you, so somebody had to talk some sense into him. Kenny is not going to tell me anything else. You know, I'm one of the few people he trusts, and that's probably over. What's more important to you, Lem? Can he trust in you now or, or being grateful to you later? What's important to me is that I can trust you, and apparently I can't do that anymore. 
What are you talking about? You know, I never know what you're gonna say or do anymore, Bert. I mean, first you go off acting like you're single. Y you're telling things after you swear up and down you won't. I mean, I, I never know what's next, and I'm starting not to want to. What's that mean? It means I'm tired and I gotta go to work. Here she is, brothers and sisters. The black woman who is Excuse helping me. to desecrate our ancestors. A black woman who for a few silver coins has become a grave snatcher. Care to comment, Miss Joseph? I'm also the black woman who will show the people that your grandstanding is the reason that affordable housing never got built. So what will you do for them, them Reverend Baxter? Will you invite the homeless to come live with you in your 10,000 square foot estate or feed them from your custom built sub zero refrigerator? Hey, what's up, man? Should be careful about taking too much of that over-the-counter shit. Yeah. It'll tear up your stomach. <laughs> I'm sorry about telling Bird. I mean, I, I was just so freaked out. I, I had to tell somebody. I mean, but she shouldn't have come to you. Hey, 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 there's nothing to be sorry about. If she hadn't come here, I'd still be going to the local pharmacy. And the way I see it, you telling her saved me from a lot worse pain than my damn back. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's <laughs> real cool. Yeah, but, man, I, I was all the way wrong for dragging you back into your old life. You know, her running around setting me up with painkillers. I feel sick inside for putting you through that. Man, you ain't put me through nothing. I, I put myself through it. I mean, we are brothers, Kenny. Ain't nothing ever gonna fuck that up. Great. Looks like we have a deal. Reverend Baxter <laughs> will select a new resting place for the remains and buildable homes will pay relocation costs provided it is within city limits. I'm pleased that we could come to an understanding. So are we. Yeah. I'll draw up settlement papers and have them ready for signatures tomorrow morning. Any chance that I might be able to steal you away for Operation Rise Up? <laughs> well, you never know. Sharp as a tack. She's beautiful, too. All right, now. All right. Y'all take care. Bye bye. Is that right? He went around me. Ex parte communication? He didn't represent Reverend Bobby Baxter. Ex parte rules don't apply. Technically. But you knew he would go straight to my client. Yes. I guess I did. So much for separating business and personal. I tried. You got personal right off the bat. So, okay, now the Reverend gets to look like a hero in the press. When you and I both know he's just an opportunist who found the right cause to exploit. Thanks to you. I'm an advocate. It's my professional duty to do everything for my client he would do for himself if you know how. I'm not one of your students. This isn't a class on professional responsibility. Oh. You couldn't deal with me being as good as you are. So you pushed me, you played head games. I guess you thought just because we kissed, my brain would suddenly lose the capacity to practice law. I never thought any such thing. Yeah, well, then what did you think? That my passion for you wouldn't interfere with my passion for what I do. Good luck finding the same joy in your personal life that you found in your professional one. I'll be fine, Professor. Oh, 
sure you will. For me, baby girl. Ah, <laughs> and that means I own the entire block. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mommy, it's from with Connecticut Avenue, but one more roll, and I'll have Broadway. Well, the slum maid is going to the kitchen to get some ice cream. Would his lordship like some? Yeah, sure. Me too, Mom. Oh, of well, course, sweetheart. Mm. Kenny? Thank you. Oh, my, I'm telling mommy you stole her money. No, I didn't. Put my money back, Ahmad. Oh, yeah. Home is in the air. Life is okay. Dreaming the blue skies coming my way. When Sunday comes calling, I'll be around. Can feel. 